Get this 11 to 1 weekdays on the Triple M Network. Did you guys see Current Affair last oh, night? I did. Well, I didn't want you to mention it. I mean, I thought we could just sweep it under the rug. And you How said. long were you sleeping with Pauline Hanson, Richard Marslin? Well, things got hot and heavy for about three weeks, yeah. mm-hmm. and then it tapered off. Oh, oh, people think we're making this up. They, they think, do. oh, it's just another sketch on no, Get This. No. Have Oh, listen <laughs> to this. She's claiming Richard and her had a thing that started in this Canberra motel in 1996 and burnt for two weeks. Burnt is right. I had smoke coming out of my underpants for days. We had to take the smoke detectors out of the room. Not that there was any. It was a Canberra motel room after all. So you can say categorically you never had sex with Pauline Hanson. I'm not saying anything of the sort. She, she was hot. And the constant undercurrent of racism just added fuel to the fire. I can't understand why he would be so aggressive in his denial of something that I believe and many other people believe happened. I'm not denying it. She's the hottest bigot I've ever boned. So this is what they said on 60 Minutes. Minutes. My oh. private life is my private life. Oh, leave it out, Pauline. It wasn't that private when we were doing it short bus style over the salad bar at that Canberra knocking shop. Now she not only names the motel and the month it started, she even claims he cooked her dinner there, though the menu is unclear. I'll tell you what was on the menu. One nation tale, three courses, each one steamier than the one before. But I have absolutely no doubt that Richard and Pauline had a sexual relationship. Of course we did. Look at this. Talk about worn out. I'll never be able to teabag again. And I saw him give her quite a, a serious kiss when she stepped out of an elevator. Look, she didn't require a please explain when I suggested going down. Uh, and uh, they disappeared and I didn't see him again for 40 or 50 minutes. In fact, I'd gone to sleep in the car while I was waiting for him to come back. I had a lot to do. It takes quite a while to go round the grounds with Pauline. I mean, she's constantly stopping to bag out the Asians. Don't worry, Pauline. I won't go blabbing to the press with any fire crotch talk. I'm not worried about anything. Her Don't suggestion is that they we slept like together on what was essentially a first date. So, yeah, very poor form and really bad reflection on her, I think. Hey, don't blame Pauline. How could she resist my pavement T-shirt and collection of Matthew McConaughey movies? We'll have to wait for the book launch to get Pauline's responses, but we did conduct a straw poll today to see who you believe is gospel and who's telling porkies. I believe in Pauline Hanson more so than... Richard Marsland. I don't like Pauline much, so I'd go for... Marsland. If you stay with her, would you deny it? I would. I believe her. Is it true? Richard Marsden offered to demonstrate the Turkish grip. Please explain. Hey, look, the only way to settle this is with a lie detector, OK? Although she didn't have any trouble detecting me lying beneath her with my f- What is it with lie detectors lately? Howard Gipps with that report. Here's a big story out of Kuala Lumpur. Police have detained Ooh. an eight-member group of small robbers dubbed the Midget Gang. That's unfair. Who allegedly confessed to committing 14 break-ins over the last three months. Yeah, after a series of uh, reported thefts from low shelves across the city. <laughs> <laughs> the hall contained no fine whiskies. I'm sorry. Uh, all the gang members were diminutive. The mm. Star newspaper reported yesterday without saying whether they were dwarves or just unusually small. <laughs> the gang members confessed to their crimes when they were detained, according to the report. Gee, imagine the police lineup for that. <laughs> a whole lot of midgets, some people just crouching, Grant Denyer, all there. <laughs> Uh, the arrests came about when residents in a housing area <laughs> alerted police after noticing midgets loitering suspiciously in a field <laughs> near their homes. In a field? Now, if you saw eight midgets loitering in a field, would you immediately conclude criminal gang? Yes. Well, I thought maybe a tornado had lifted up my house and deposited it <laughs> in the magical land of Oz. You wouldn't think that. You wouldn't think low life immediately. <laughs> Why? You'd think it was some sort of forced perspective trick, is what you would think. <laughs> What's going on out there? Gondry's been at the at the controls around here. <laughs> it's a Gondry fest. Dear, oh dear. That'll be a great court case, though. You know, will they have to get a midget jury to ensure a fair trial? You know, when they get sentenced, how hard would it be to resist, you know, the eight midgets all just singing, hi ho, hi ho, <laughs> it's off to jail we go, as they exit the courtroom. How could you resist doing that? Well, you shouldn't resist it. Why should you? <laughs>
<laughs> Another important issue is uh, young people, old people. Oh, the wars go on in England. Who's winning? Well, this whole mosquito thing. Do they have that oh, at your local shops? Yes, this is the... Um, oh, I'll let you explain. Well, it's a high-pitched sound mm. that only people under 25 can hear. Does that mean you've just lost that sound yet? Well, yeah. Is that what this segment's about? <laughs> you guys are the deafest people I know. The headphones in this studio. <laughs> yeah. It's like an air raid siren, you know? <laughs> but we don't have individual volume control. Well, Even community not, radio I, has individual... Anyway, so what is it? It's, it's, the most it's, common sight of guests <laughs> coming in here is putting on the headphones. Like, oh, my God! <laughs> it's taking them off. So it's a sound that uh, people only under the age of 25 can hear. That's um, right. And in England, they project this sound outside shops. and to you keep know, kitties away. To keep kitties away. Because the kitties can hear it, the old people can't. That's amazing. My local shop is uh, keeping me at bay with uh, Lips of an Angel just constantly <laughs> playing. But that's interesting, isn't it? Although some shopping centres will play a sound mm. that only old people can hear. <laughs> no one under the age of 25 can hear that. Mother and son thief. That's it. There's just all they're hearing is silence, the under 25s <laughs> right now. Wow. What is a sound that only old people can hear? Kids stealing fruit. That was one that, <laughs> that we could never hear it, but my grand could hear it from 10 blocks away. Kids walking on the lawn. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Have you ever been tricked into going on holiday? Yes. Is that our topic today? How does yeah. that work? Well, in your uh, Something magazine this mm. week. Oh, I love the uh, Something. Uh, new right. idea. There yeah. it is. Mm. Glenn McGrath, Australian cricket star, has said that he's going to hit the road with his family. So mm. he's got a, so you know, he's a fairly wealthy dude. He's sure. going where he wants. What's he doing? He's got a caravan. They're going to drive around Australia for a bit with the family in the back. Oh, oh. I mean, that's a rip off if you hit his kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like, technically child abuse, I would have thought. And I can relate, because when I was a kid, it was just oh, yeah. constant. I remember once my mum said, you're going on holiday with your uh, uncle and your auntie and your cousins? And I was like, yes. And we all piled into the back of my uncle's car. And I noticed that we were going through country New South Wales, and the only things we seemed to be stopping at were car dealerships. Oh, yeah. And I found out years later that what they were actually doing, they were just looking for a car for my auntie. And oh. my uncle was so obsessed with saving cash yeah. that he was convinced it was cheaper to buy one on the border of other places. So that's what we were doing. We were just driving around the border looking for the cheapest possible Mitsubishi and Magna. passing it off as a holiday. Yeah. Wow. I was in there for two weeks. What about, did you ever have to pile the Awful. whole family into a tiny caravan? No. Nah. And tour around so that <laughs> the arguments could be contained in a much smaller space? Because we lived in Thames at yeah. the bottom of the Coromandel Peninsula in New Zealand, and we would always go to this really crappy <laughs> caravan park on the other side of the peninsula. And yeah. we could tell that that's where we were going. We're going there again, aren't we? For a fight. <laughs> And then one day it's, no, we're going somewhere else. And he's driven up the peninsula. Oh, we're going somewhere new. And he's driven all the way up the peninsula and around the other side and come at the caravan park from a different angle. Like that was a different holiday because we were approaching it from a different direction. And then one time we've cracked the shits about this. And he's gone, all right, all right, we'll go to a great place. And we've gone and parked the caravan in a caravan park that was only about 10 blocks from our house. And we've had a two-day holiday in our own town. <laughs> like we could have just driven home to watch telly in about seven minutes. <laughs> now, nah, this is a holiday. You complained about Pawanui. We're not going there again. There, this is a holiday now. That's awful. That's pretty typical. And really. always, I was saying, it was just constant, you know, girlfriends trying to get you to go on, you know, awful week-long beach holidays. Oh, I'm not sitting on a beach. Oh, oh. What do you want to do? Oh, we just sit on the beach and what, talk? <sighs> What is Sunbake? The I mean, Just nothing I, there. There's no televisions on the. When open some cinemas on beaches, and I'm there. I thought that that whole melanoma business finally put this going to the beach <laughs> business to bed for once and for all. I can't even talk properly. I'm so angry yeah, 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 about yeah. that caravan. Still, years yeah. later, yeah, the scars, the emotional scars. Hey, you, Rich. I have some emotional scars. Uh, bad holidays when I was a kid. My uncle ran a sheep station, massive sheep station, thousands and really? thousands of acres. Yeah. Wow. Great holiday destination for a kid because we thought it would just be two weeks of fanging around on motorbikes. <laughs> Got there, ended up being child labour work camp. Uh, I hear you, I hear you, brother. <laughs> it just happened to be shearing season. Isn't that bizarre? And we need a roustabout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to pick up, you know, sweep out sheep. Did you ever and... have to grab the balls, the, the discarded balls off the balls? Uh, there was no uh, sheep tea bag <laughs> arrangements. Um, because every time all... you get there, yeah. oh, the, all of a sudden the motorbikes are out of commission. Yeah, the yeah. horses don't want to be ridden. Yeah. And all this Wasn't sort of that stuff? Your, your first job? Job, uh, picking just, up discarded testes I, on a farm. I realised it was part of my holiday now that Rich has brought it up. But you had a special tool for it. My hands. I call it lefty and righty. <laughs> Great fun. Though. Born oh, with tools for that. Some more applause, please, for Kathy Godbold, who's Hello. here. She used to do a bit of radio herself. Did you ever get into any trouble on radio? Any controversy? 
Oh, no. Only, well, occasionally when I stuffed up. And yeah. I swore a few times. Oh, <laughs> really? We leave that to the listeners on yes, this program. Yes, we do. No, it's not really. I didn't get in trouble. Did uh, you just, learn how to panel? Nervous. Did you learn how to no. trip to light fantastic? Well, this is all new, what you guys have got here. This like, is new. No. This, <laughs> this <laughs> is, in <laughs> fact, the this original is... panel uh, from yeah. 1980. First, well, the one next door, the mirror image of this, was mm. the first one ever used in commercial FM radio. Mm. Yeah. We didn't have computers. Oh, oh that's right. true. Those so, have been added. How old am I? Well, no. Yeah, so just playing everything off acetate. <laughs> in those days. Yes. What about that Alan Jones? Is he in some sort of trouble? Oh, I've got to be careful. Do, didn't he do yeah. He's named somebody? Or he's something? named yeah, he somebody he shouldn't have. Uh, Who's, I think, underage. I think, uh, I think maybe. I'm, I'm trying to get all the details. But yeah. you, Where are you trying to get them from? <laughs> uh, from news.com.au. Ah, oh, good job. <laughs> Does it look like, looks like YouTube to me. A cat <laughs> leaping backwards into a sink is uh, not going to tell us about some judice. <laughs> but There's Alan, a great gossip site called Perez Hilton. What have you been reading on there? On Perez Hilton. Oh, he just has naughty sites, really. Naughty well, not sites? naughty sites, but oh, all damn. the pictures that you can't publish in oh, any magazine. Yes, yes. Just ah. the full on boobs and, and down, be- below. down below. Down below, dear. Down below. Hello. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, but, a bit but, of tea bagging, bit of wow. upskirting, something for everybody. <laughs> Didn't Nicole Kidman have to learn how to tea bag for her next film? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that what's going on in Baz's latest <laughs> journey? I might go along. Yeah, that's probably the first Nicole Kidman <laughs> flick oh, I've ever paid for. No, it, actually, Kathy is onto something. Days of Fun. The two, the teabagging era. <laughs> no, Baz Luhrmann has had Nicole Kidman uh, castrating bulls on oh, a farm yep. in preparation for her new film. <laughs> Gee, oh, she doesn't have much luck with men <laughs> <laughs> or, or animals. <laughs> what is going to be happening in that movie? Something good by the sound. I could get a gig. They're going to need someone to pick up the discarded testicles. I've got industry experience. That was Ed's first job. <laughs> there it is. It's all you. Was that a Triple M thing? Was that yeah, something? it's part of Black Thunder. <laughs> it's part of, in, it's part of what they the call initiation. You but the things you do to get on air. They're yeah. suggesting. <laughs> Are they suggesting Alan Jones might be going to prison? Uh, yes. Ooh. Like, you know, like possible jail term after he's found to have broken the law that prohibits the naming of juvenile witnesses in court oh. cases. Okay. Oh. What did you say, Ed? He'd probably be looking forward to a bit of prison time. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up at it's work in the costume with the arrows on it that he's made himself. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Waving the flag for right. the prison system. <laughs> Have a look at this for a classy headline in the New Weekly this week. Misha's boozy spew. Oh. <laughs> like she hasn't done that before. Oh. <laughs> Misha Barton has what? thrown up in the street. It's made international news. <laughs> Tonsil insiders say. Yeah. It was a very classy spew, though. <laughs> what it, was was it? In, it was in autumn colours. <laughs> <laughs> Dior is a... Uh, Commissioned it as a new spray. <laughs> what about uh, the King? This new thing with uh, yeah. Stephen Curry as Graham Kennedy, the King, of course. You are. I actually play my own mother because she was wow. the one that Graham Kennedy said oh, the F word to. Oh. He did what was called at the time the bird call. Yes. Yeah. So my mum was on IMT. Which Rosemary Morgan. Yes, Rosemary Morgan. So I guess the easiest person to cast was her daughter. Yeah. So it was pretty freaky dressing as my mum and the, and the if wig and the family members seen the footage yet and uh... no they haven't. I just I just hope they like it. But here's you know, where I remember Rosemary Morgan from. You go to the movies, the slides. You know the slides. Yeah. Come to Jim's Hardware. She, her voice. Did of, she did a lot of those. Yeah. Thinking about carpet? Of course you are. Always delicious photographs of bolognese in those ads. Yeah. Jesus. She was the Tarnoff lady. I don't know oh, if you Tarnoff, Tarnoff, yeah. From Tarnoff? Tarnoff. Tarnoff. Yeah, yeah, I remember that well, ad. What's Tarnoff? We've got rid of all the um, splotchiness on silver. Yeah. Oh. That, that's oh. what she's known as. That was a big ad. Still say. The Tarnoff lady. Tarnoff. Tarnoff. I love those. Do they still have the slides at the cinema? They do. Yep. Very early on, mm. you've literally got to sit through one session mm. and just hang around for 40 minutes till the next one starts. At the very start, they'll, cr- they'll, they'll crank on. slick, though. They've sort of done it on a computer now. I liked it when they would sort of judder across <laughs> and the voiceover would be struggling to keep it's up. It's a guy with a screen, just pushing them on, <laughs> dragging them off. Mostly for uh, food court restaurants with uh, fake marble tables. Oh, oh my kind of place. <laughs> Kathy Godbold is with us. She's been in Neighbours. She's been in Home and Away. Just tell us, who were your characters? Again, oh, God, we're going back fifteen years. That's mate. all right. We go back further than that on this show. <laughs> yeah, uh, home in a way. I played a girl who died of leukemia. On okay, the beach. Mm, yeah, all right. We can cross was, that plot that line off. Did then, you come back though? Were you someone? Yes, who's... I, I was a ghost. Seriously. <gasps> okay. Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious because the ratings were so good. 
I thought, well, we'd like to bring her back. So for a couple of eps, I was a ghost. And how were the effects so done? So much fun. What, what was it, just a sheet over you or <laughs> yeah, the CGI? Eyes cut up. <laughs> no, no, I was just me. But, you know, people were talking to me who were going slightly insane and thinking Music oh, underneath? And, like oh, yeah. creepy music underneath? Yeah. Everything. On Neighbours? What did they have you doing uh, on that? Basically played a slut. Oh, um, slut. Um, yes, yeah, tried to take all the men away from the... Uh, you know, nice, innocent girl. How did you oh. go? Um, not too good. Yeah. Who'd you score with on the show? <laughs> guy at the time called Darren. Oh, oh Darren. Is that, is that Michaelson? Da- no, 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 long one. no. No, he's long since moved into ghost status, that actor. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chances, what was your plot line on Chances? Were you a victim of the vampire? Um, Yes, I was actually, <laughs> but they got rid of me because, well, they called me into the office and said, we'd like to sign you for a whole new uh, new series oh, and actually a whole new year, but we'd like you to uh, have a nudity clause. Uh, and I'm like, I'm 16, I have no boobs, I have no nothing. Uh, what are you oh, going to show can, me doing? We can drop them in later. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I sort of said, no, thank you. Mm. Okay, so slut in one. Dead in another, mm. refusing to be nude in the third. Oh, and two two different storylines on Blue Healers. Oh, oh yes, as, as a, a, a different prostitute. <laughs> so, a different I, prost- I, I How did you know. delineate between the two? <laughs> well, talent, baby. You yeah. know, I did my homework. <laughs> All right, these are great. So you, these okay. are the elements of new plot lines. Richard claims neighbours. Struggling a bit in the ratings. Well, I mean, it's not me claiming. I mean, the numbers bear me out. It's in the news. Yeah. When it's they call, me. we'll say it was in the paper yesterday. Okay, yeah. fair yeah. enough. Reputable. So they're, they're looking for new ideas. So, yeah. now, they they, now, I've just had a look on uh, some of the old websites here. Mm. Mm. Now, have a listen to this. This is one that we didn't have anymore. Kerry Bishop, pregnant with Joe Mangle's child, wades into the wetlands to protest at the opening of another duck hunting oh, season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She gets shot by a stray hunter's bullet. Of course she does. Mm. That's excellent. Okay. Wetland shootings. <laughs> wetland shootings cross that one off the list now greg fleet killed daphne yeah that's right with a, a brick well he claims it was a house brick but uh, richard thinks he ran her down well, no, i'm not sure <laughs> either way happened. she was dead okay. was some sort of car daphne. accident wasn't there so i right. wanted her hair do so bad <laughs> <laughs> so did greg so what I'm, hence the carnage so what i'm thinking is that every couple of episodes let's say neighbors if yep. the ratings are down a little bit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fleet just wanders past in the background holding a brick. Oh, yes! He could go it at any minute, at anybody, and it's riveting watching. You don't know who Greg's going to throw it at. He's just looming, like sort of death in the background. Holding a brick. All right, these are ideas. We're not just looking for new ideas. Perhaps what we're really looking for is old ideas that have worked in the past that we can revive. Classic. Uh, (laughs) Hello, Aaron. How are you? It's got taking a leaf out of Chance's book. Yeah. <laughs> and they had a classic plot line which involved Eva Braun's necklace, mummies and Nazis. That's right. And if you put the necklace yeah. on, didn't you turn into Eva Braun or something like that? Something like that, yeah. She's like some ancient pharaoh that would possess you. Which show do you think we should you bring the necklace in? Well, Neighbours is always good. I mean, you can always ask Harold. Yeah. Oh, we're going to Harold. Well, the right-wing tendencies. <laughs> 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 and mummies? We're getting mummies in there now? Mummies, zombies, why not? Maybe a secret uh, Nazi bunker underneath Ramsey Street. Okay, how about this, Aaron? How about Harold puts on a necklace maybe for a fancy dress party. All of the dead neighbours that have, uh, that oh, have passed yes. away rise Ooh. up zombie style and try and eat the current cast. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, and you can also get a sort of Frankenfurter thing going with um, Harold. <laughs> wow, uh, a lot of ideas. People are very keen to get Harold <laughs> into women's clothing. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Hi, Ralph. How are you? Well, I reckon tried and true, mate. Uh, go the old uh, bomb in the delicatessen job. Bomb in the deli. <laughs> Obviously, Greg Fleet's going to plant it. Now, uh, which deli are we thinking? The one we're we talking uh, Erinsborough or Summer Bay here? Well, I reckon we could do a, a similar plot line, you know, like one in each show. I oh, multiple that. bombs. I love that, yeah. Ralph. Just imagine Alf, couldn't you? Ah, oh, bomb the flame and deli, would you? <laughs> <laughs> and this usually happens because uh, a number of actors start making pay claims. Is yeah, that right, Kat? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> so usually when the actors want to raise, somebody will walk past the props department and see somebody <laughs> painting a cardboard bomb up <laughs> with wires to get. Can't tell you what this is for. <laughs> Everyone will be dying in order yes. of... Least hotness. You just look up on the call sheet for the next week and you go, oh, uh, I'm, I'm not on it. Have we got time for one final suggestion, Ed? How are you, Sean? Mate, I've come to the conclusion there's not enough violence mm. and not enough gore on, it on either show. Yeah. So remember that 
old horror movie Hellraiser. Oh, oh yes, yep. The bloke that plays Pinhead, mm. he could go on either one of the shows and just tear the place apart. Yeah. But <laughs> maybe, Pinhead, let's let but, loose Pinhead. But maybe Pinhead could be the hot new love interest first. Yeah. So for the first few weeks, Pinhead's just making out with people at the beach. Yeah, it's very painful, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, but good TV. <laughs> and then and then he snaps. Yeah. You know what I mean? Someone beats him uh, mm. in a surf life-saving race mm. in Summer Bay, perhaps. Yep. Perhaps uh, Paul Robinson plays a dirty trick on him in Erinsborough, and then yeah. he snaps. He yeah. might get a dodgy coffee from the cafe or something like that. Dodgy coffee from the oh. cafe. And, and maybe just sick of people hanging their keys on his face. <laughs> and after a certain amount of time, he's had enough. He snaps. <laughs> I'd like to see Harold in the full pinhead makeup. Mm. That's a Wouldn't good that idea. be good? That's a good if you idea. ever saw Saw 1 or 2, mm. anything from that, where they're just all <laughs> locked up in a dark room tied together, and they Gee. have to yeah. saw each other's legs off. Gee, wow. You must have had a fun time working on those shows, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Zwa is with us from Wilfred. Uh, you mentioned you've done a bit of uh, journalistic work, mm. Adam. Uh, what advice for Richard Marsland, whose column I think is about to be axed in That's Adelaide? That's right. Yeah, no, I've been boned. Uh, next week's actually, <laughs> actually this Sunday is my last column. This What's Sunday, it about, the, Rich? the Sunday Mail in the, Adelaide. The Sunday Mail in Adelaide. Um, and they always told me, like, when I started doing it, it's it's the brief of, like, the perspective of a young man. Yeah. It's yeah, a man's yeah. world. We all just live in it. That yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. And they said to read your columns <laughs> to take inspiration and, and some, you know. The Jokes. Tone, the tone of your column, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically just, yeah. Help yourself. <laughs> just copied and pasted. And it was uh, pretty short on jokes, my column. Um, I was once described as a poor man's Andrew Bolt. Oh, yeah, oh, and that was that was interesting. Yeah. Ever um, since uh, global warming turned out to be true, he's the poor man's <laughs> Andrew right. Bolt. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it, when you work for Murdoch newspapers, you know the line at yeah. all times. Oh, yeah. And all really the editors say, at no stage has Rupert Murdoch ever laid down the law to me and told mm. me what to do and what mm. my editorial policy should be. But it is implicit in every yeah. kind of News Limited journalist what the line is at any time, you know. Mm. Um, well, isn't it amazing that 170 newspapers around the world all came to the same conclusion about the <laughs> Iraq war? That's Why right. one editor decided that it was a bad thing? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, and it, but they could have if they wanted. Y- no. Yeah, yeah. They could have. Yeah. Are you going to do the big goodbye thing? Uh, to like, no, you know, I'll just have a little parting. Uh, great. Thanks uh, very much no, for the no, forum. No. You can have a crack at anyway. You can yeah, have a swipe. Yeah, you've got a well, snap. No, I can't have a Can't go. you have a go at some of the many footballers' wives that are taking over your column? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, they've been very good to me. Have they? Yeah, people, yeah. Footballers' wives? Well, are they? I mean, I, I guess I don't have the profile of a footballer's wife. Hey, That's well, true, because yeah. you've never done anything. I it's mean, they, a... they've gone out, met mm-hmm. a footballer in a nightclub, married them. Dragged him on. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that is journalism. That's right. You... Years of writing. Who cares? National radio show. Whatever. No, Nothing. Yeah. Next, no. please. That's right. We've actually got a footballer's wife coming here to panel next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> Animals behaving <laughs> like people. Oh, Don't you? There know, was a bit of, of it on yeah. Australia's yeah. Got Talent last night. There was a dog walking a tightrope. I mean, yeah, does television get any better oh, than that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what have you seen? Well, cats, you know, yeah, yeah. wandering yeah, around like they own the place. <laughs> uh, an old classic is, you know, getting the paper and the slippers and all that kind yeah. of feel. Yeah. I don't mm. think that happens very much anymore. Yeah, our dog yeah. gets the paper and will take uh, plastic bottles out to the recycle bin. Very good dog. If it's a Labrador, you, all you need is one salt and vinegar chip and you can train them <laughs> to do that in five minutes. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, I've got a cat that pats me. If I'm that, what? If you? Well, yeah. Oh. I think it's actually a sign to say that, like, if I'm not patting his head, he'll reach up and pat oh, my, my head. Oh, my goodness. And that's the signal. That's what I want. I want to get, pat. Patting on the head, not the tummy, Adam. The head. I've got wow. it. My cats used to uh, get into bed with, with myself, of course, and they'd be upset if they couldn't get under the doona and put their head on the pillow. Yeah, on the pillow. <laughs> and yes. then maybe just the two little paws. Oh, yeah. my God. Over the sheet there. That's a good look. It's so cute you don't mind not getting any sleep. Nah. <laughs> Animals behaving Prefer like it. people. I sort of grew up on a farm and uh, sort my, of? my parents, yeah, uh, they, <laughs> they raised this little pig, this beautiful pig called Isabel, yeah. and, but she didn't know. She was sort of, They imprint pigs. They, they'll follow you around if you know they do it from a young age. And uh, she had no idea though, that she had grown to about three metres long and half a tonne sort of heavy. Right, right. Mm. She was and this delicious. beautiful old sow and she would roll in the mud and then she managed to bash down the screen door of the front house. <laughs> Came in and laid, this is absolutely true, came in and laid on the couch. Oh, 
Oh, she was so into what well, she wanted because she used to come well, inside. She wanted me to say hey. When she was a piglet, she used to come inside, but then she just thinks, well, I can still do it <laughs> now that I'm a massive sow and just mud all over the couch, Rich, destroyed it forever. Was she delicious in the end? <laughs> she died of pneumonia. Thanks for bringing. Sorry. It to <laughs> on the couch, hogging the remotes. Yes. Hogging. Hey, Fantastic. Hey? Oh, I didn't even mean that. Oh, oh no, <laughs> accidental pun. You should be ringing the mock bell for that one. <laughs> Out of the pool, Martin. Uh, how about this? A woman who invented 20 children has claimed $622,000 in payments. Fake children? Fake children. She's invented 20 children. Right. Instead of getting a job, every time she gets a bit low on cash, she just invents a kid. <laughs> Police became suspicious when she had three kids the week before the PlayStation 3 came out. <laughs> And they went around there to find out what was going on. And she's had to dress up the dog, <laughs> put a bonnet on the dog, try and breastfeed it. She's had to, you know, <laughs> lamps. Drawing a <laughs> face on a rock. <laughs> That's my youngest. She's invented 20. She's getting the baby bonus 20 times over. And it's only when she got to 20 they were like, you know that woman with 19 kids? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, what a, what a workload she must have. She's had another one. That's it. It's a rod. That's a rod. We need to get back onto safe ground. <laughs> What about nude news? Oh. Have we got a musical intro? Uh -huh. Everybody new. Everybody new. Nude news. Everybody new. Everybody new. Nude news. Everybody new. Everybody new. Everybody new. Nude news. Nude news. Okay. Whoa. The bar has been raised. They're quite demanding, those guys. And listen to this from Perth in Scotland. Yeah. They've got their own Perth over there. Detectives are hunting a naked old age pensioner who has been spotted joyriding around local bowling greens <laughs> on a scooter for the disabled. <laughs> oh. uh, one witness uh, called the police but the elderly streaker then put his clothes back on and drove off <laughs> <laughs> thus blending into the crowd. <laughs> wow, streaker on one of them scooters. Poor old Mr. Bullsack. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, they call him the streak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's very slowly coming over here again. I'm so old, it takes a long time to turn my head. Oh, gosh, it's not all the way to... Ah, oh, I saw some stuff. Pull I... over, driver. <laughs> what a car chase. Oh, he's put his clothes back on. We'll never catch him now. A lot of wind drag. In the paper today, there is an artist's impression of the NADS. Please call Crime Stoppers if you recognise them. Watch out for that bloke. Hey, here's some uh, nude news from New Zealand. Mm. A witness in a Palmerston oh, yeah. courtroom has given evidence while topless. <sighs> yes. Now, this was a case against an alternative medicine practitioner who has been accused of uh, touching the breasts of his patients. Now, that's obviously not funny. Yeah, but maybe that's his uh, approach. All oh, right. Very alternative medicine. Oh, alternative medicine. <laughs> Could yeah. work. But, you know, the idea of someone uh, being topless in the courtroom, it says that uh, they needed the woman to be topless to demonstrate how the bloke's rigorous massaging Aww. had caused her bra to uh, fall to the ground, Benny Hill style. <laughs> yes! There we are. Gee, so it's a serious case, but you've got topless women in the courtroom. Oh, yeah. All right, could we please have some decorum in the court, ladies and gentlemen? For this demonstration, let's keep it tasteful. Bailiff? It's getting hot in here, <laughs> so take off all your you can testify, but you can't touch. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, my mum wanted me to become a lawyer when I was growing up, and I thought, nah, I might go to the acting game. I think I was wrong. <laughs> Why can't Zara Gard Wilson uh, <laughs> get up to yeah, some of this? Give some evidence. Oh, that'd be a fun courtroom. Mm. Erection, Your Honour! <laughs> Sustain. Hello. Oh, good morning. He's lightning on those this morning, Rich. Are we all done? <laughs> Have we emptied out that sorry bag of jokes? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> You're looking, going back for a second pass. Look at you. Here's a story that really, uh, oh, this, you don't want to read this over breakfast. Talk show host Rosie O'Donnell uh, hangs nude uh, upside down for up to 30 minutes a day to improve her mental state. <laughs> Gee, the image of a nude Rosie O'Donnell hanging upside down is certainly... Quickens my mental step. <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> Hanging upside down for 30 minutes, however, does not improve the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. <laughs> so hanging upside, is that a, a serious theory? The idea is the blood goes to your head, so blood therefore goes to the, head. the brain's working more. Then you, when you get back down, your, your brain's so full of blood that you can think better. Ah, maybe we should start doing that in the studio. Like so hang on, so people emerging from uh, Fun Park power blackouts 
are suddenly markedly <laughs> more intelligent. Genius. People staggering off the oh, whirlpool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm much smarter now. I see now that the ghost train is merely an amalgam of tatty fairground tricks. <laughs> I couldn't see it before. That hanging upside down has cleared do my they, brain. Do they do a ghost train? I haven't seen a ghost train for a long time. Yeah. Do they still do the guy oh, yeah. in, the, in the latex mask jumping out? Ah, and it's yeah. clearly the guy that just sold you the ticket. Oh, they look. Got, they've still got the bow tie and the, little, and the waistcoat on underneath the rubber mask. One by one, all the tricks in the ghost train just collapse and they're not replaced. I think I went on a ghost train that was just uh, <laughs> Coke cans, empty Coke cans, hanging on bits of string, <laughs> just banging into your head for like two minutes. That's all it was. This is fro- oh, it's quite sc- Ow, quite scary. <laughs> Ryan Shelton is here with us. You went to Vegas. Now, what was oh, I got married right. in Vegas? It's a top spot. There's so much to see. Oh, it's fantastic. It is one of those places that looking at it, um, when you see it on TV again, you see photos. A part of you thinks, that's too cheesy. I'm not that sort of a person. But the great thing is, you are that sort of a person. Yes, you are. (laughs) Everyone is. Big time. (laughs) You've just got to dig deep and say, yes, I am Mr. Vegas. Uh, (laughs) Yes, I want to go and look at the tigers that are sitting still at the Luxor wishing they were dead. (laughs) Yes, I'm going to take some flash photography of their sad, sad faces. Yes, I love the sound of poker machines. I do like it. I guess I'm going to spend three hours discussing whether I thought the Hard Rock Cafe Casino or Hooters had a bit of feel to it. (laughs) And then did you go to one of those casinos where it's just always daytime? Like Caesar's oh, yeah. Palace oh, yeah. has that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the best thing about Caesar's Palace is that uh, the casino bleeds out into the shopping mall. So oh, there's no right, yeah. real joint. So the pokey machines go out the door of the casino and right up the sort of main drag yep. of your shopping mall. And is that where they've got the sky painted yeah, on so the you, roof? Yeah, so you think it's two in the afternoon at all times. But what that also means is that technically the whole place is licensed. So oh. you'll see people taking their drinks oh, to yeah. the shops. Yeah. You know what the greatest thing about that is? Is that they have these things called meter margaritas. Oh, oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, where yeah. people ha- have these massive like yard glass Yard things. glass margaritas. Yeah, like in like fluoro yellow plastic. Mm. And it's yeah. hung around their necks because they're so heavy. And they just walk around town, like down the main street with these huge margaritas. And you see them in shoe town, trying on shoes with a yard glass margarita <laughs> rain, just propping the yard glass <laughs> to try against the shoe. But they're so disgusting that I don't think many people actually drink them. People get so mesmerised by, <laughs> by the excitement of having a meter margarita. <laughs> if it wasn't alliteration, they wouldn't buy it. So true. Like know? so many things. Tell, Tell you what, though, if you want to uh, see some dancing, yeah. go to a nightclub on New Year's Eve with Ryan Shelton. Yes. Feed him oh. full of Red Bull. Ooh. He was literally, oh. while the people were having sex in the booths mm-hmm. <laughs> in the nightclub in Vegas, <laughs> was happening. Ryan was literally the last person dragged off the dance floor. <laughs> well, I like to dance. <laughs> and locked in a cage for a season. <laughs> I love a reporter with an interesting name. Uh, and, uh, Harry Chan- Potter? Harry Potter. Mm, mm-hmm. There's uh, Channel 9 has Jonathan Creek. And uh, there is a newsreader, I'm pretty sure I have this correct, Charmaine Tragoon. Oh, <laughs> that is exotic. That's Anton Enos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Channel yeah, 10 News yeah. has uh, Lisa Goddard Rolls. I love that. Yeah, Gross. Lisa Goddard Rolls, doesn't she? <laughs> Gareth Borum. Yes, yeah. he does. On a, an English show, which is years old now, which you might have seen uh, The Day Today on Brass Iron. Yeah, yeah. Chris, yeah. Chris Morris's Chris gear. Morris. ABC's Morris is, yeah. never shown it, but don't get me started. <laughs> well, they did these um, American correspondent stories where they had the female American reporter, and I always loved the name that they use, Barbara Wintergreen. <laughs> Such a good American reporter yeah, name. Beautiful. Barbara Wintergreen. Wintergreen. <laughs> so, so, so thoughtful. Yeah. This is a story about Mimi McPherson. Let's not worry about the details of that story. This is from nah. Channel 10. She was also fined $1,050. If she doesn't pay, she could spend 21 days in jail. Summer Burke, 10 News. <laughs> That's a great name. Yeah. Shouldn't she be signing off like this? If she doesn't pay, she could spend 21 days in jail. Summer Burke, Makes me feel fine. 10 News. <laughs> Catch on. She just had a band singing that behind her every time. <laughs> Sills and Croft. But hey, it's Lisa Goddard who rolls. Wouldn't you like to roll with that Lisa Goddard? But let's not talk about that because we're talking about uh, cringing embarrassment. What's this about it? Oh, he's having a oh, sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've you got to time mate. the snacks for during the songs here. I mean, there's one right there. <laughs> Hit the music. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> We want to play that because I know you thought of this okay. idea, uh, Ryan. Independent of us, this music, do you mm. find you just have it going off in your head when certain yeah. situations arise? Well, there was a time when I went nuts on Curb Enthusiasm DVDs and I, just, yeah, I had like a weekend of it. That's great. And then the week after, whenever I found myself in an... I, I could hear it, the... Boom, 
or, or in, in my head, get like I've got a soundtrack for my life, which I don't. Um, it sounded like I did. Just bring it out. Just make that clear. I don't have a soundtrack. Oh, Ed Kevley's back with us. Hi, guys. Uh, That's a big mouthful. I, was, <laughs> I underestimated so, Lenny's... I'm wearing a bib around um, his neck. He thought I would do my traditional three minutes of waffle before I, I threw to him. I did. I knew I was in trouble when you didn't pick up a newspaper story with pink all over it. I thought, oh, hang on. He's going to ask me a question. Hey, uh, the reason we're bringing it up is mm. I thought of it because we went and saw Hot Fuzz. Ryan yes. and I were both at the Q&A session mm. uh, before the guys came in on the show. Mm. And then people get up and ask their questions. Yes. And I can't handle it. When they now, get... it's not like you've got up yourself no, and asked a question so... and you're embarrassed by your own... It's displaced embarrassment. Yes. You're embarrassed for the guy that's got up and said, well, you know, my synopsis. And it just... It just, it, you know, it gets right inside me and tears me out. And you, but you love it, right? You I, don't. It's one of those sort of things that I, <clears throat> I love seeing, not necessarily seeing people squirm, but seeing people, they, they should be squirming, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's, right, it's, right. It's that whole thing. I just, it's, I find it so intriguing that they think that that's okay what they're doing. It's just someone like, and it's obviously not. It's <laughs> not like someone jumping into the ocean and just confidently swimming towards the horizon. <laughs> like, well, I'll get somewhere in the end. Don't worry about me. We saw one like years ago. I think Santo or Snato Garo still has it on tape. Max Walker interviewing Danny DeVito mm-hmm. about Throw Mama from the Train, <laughs> and he clearly hadn't seen it. He'd seen the ad where the person gets hit in the face by a frying pan. Yeah. So it was 10 minutes of, I mean, what was the frying pan made out of? Did you use a rubber frying pan on that one, Danny? And, and he kept getting the names of all the films, right? It was uh, Throw Mama Up the Train. And uh, I left, you did Jewel Up the Nile. And you're sitting at home going, oh, I just want to call Danny DeVito and say we're not all like this. This is what I'm talking about. And that's, it's displaced this, this embarrassment. And you, someone owns it. You don't know who, but you know it's out there. Sorry, I went off the running sheet, so I've got cringing embarrassments. It will accept okay? any kind of okay. embarrassment, really. Well, uh, well, this is interesting. Um, I went to Sexpo a couple of years ago. For yeah, there you go. Tell us about okay. that, okay. Mark. Okay. Oh! Got the music cued? <laughs> <laughs> for a radio Don't show. Don't lie! What I had to go for the radio show. I had to Where go was interview, the radio show? Interview. It was the one that the late night sex, sex show, show. Oh, yeah, that the I used to do. Date, up the and date show. <laughs> you know, you used to up take... The... <laughs> That's what Max Walker called it. <laughs> You're doing that up the date show, still rich. Is that a rubber fry fan, mate? <laughs> and it was the first sex boat on a nationwide run. So a lot of the media were there, and uh, I, I was evidently walking in the background of some Vox Pops, a lot of people around the country, friends of mine, thought I was there at Sexpo to get my own individual kicks. Oh. Um, so all kinds of calls from mums and yeah, aunties yeah, and uncles. Yeah. They ask me when yeah. you got them. Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's throw it open to the listeners. Have you been cringing in embarrassment? Hi, Brendan, how are you? Good, mate, yourself? Great, man, what happened? Well, I also uh, went down to uh, Sexpo with a couple of mates. I saw you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Head over, we just headed over down to Crown afterwards to get a bite to eat. Yeah. And a bit of the crowd was following, you know. And um, all of a sudden, this girl's at the ATM in front of everyone, probably the most packed place at Crown, out of her bag full of bloody vibrator. Oh. <laughs> oh. In front of everyone, and it's rolled away. And oh. did, it, did it switch itself on and start and buzzing? And like, all of a sudden, everyone's diving on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Brenda, did the owner have a line to cover it? Oh, mate. I think um, her face, her face. Everyone just felt bad for it. You know, I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was going to pick it up and say, "Look here." Yeah. <laughs> we should have started like throwing at each other, keeping things off. Like, that would have been good. Keeping off the vibrator. You are a gentleman. But see, our phone in in the first hour. That's a good distraction for John Howard. The poles are bad. Just have a bag with a dildo fall out of it. <laughs> Roll away. <laughs> I think, I think people are talking before the dildo falls. Not dildo. The vibrator yeah, it's falls much safer. Falls out of. His handbag. Why is John Howard carrying a handbag? It doesn't matter. It's distracted <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you from the poles. Yeah, yeah, the visual yeah. of him with a handbag we, over his shoulder. How it's got the buzz. A lot of people saying, what about new ideas? You've been on for eight weeks this year, guys. Mm. Starting to sound a bit samey. Who said that? Lots of people in the emails. Really? New ideas, please. Okay. Okay, from next week. All new gear. Next week on Get This, we recall our favourite moments from the Anna Nicole Smith trial. Counsel, can we hear the testimony? Uh, thank you, Your Honour. Well, if I can refer to what the counsel for the family of Miss Smith said, I can... Uh, uh, Your Honour, are you... Uh... <coughs> 
Please continue. Then it's Dancing with the Stars with Heather Mills McCartney. Well, all I can say is this is a very bold choice, the can-can. All I can say is that I'm very glad we're up here in the commentary booth. <laughs> yeah, oh, hang on, it's coming loose. Heads down! <laughs> Get this will be there as Dr. Brendan Nelson demonstrates the Navy's new fleet of Super Hornet jet fighters. Well, I think this will prove once and for all we made the right decision. Shocks away. Watch in awe as I come screaming out of the sun at 10 o'clock. And if it's naval humour you're after, then join us for live sketches aboard HMAS Comedy. <laughs> and then it's time for more Dancing with the Stars. Well, I'm telling you that Heather Mills McCartney is nothing if not persistent. Incoming! Whoa! And if that's not offensive enough for you, from the people who brought you Mahatma Ghoulies. Oh, yes, indeed. Mino Reiki. Mino Reiki. And Kiwi Corner. <laughs> comes the show that finally gives the Swiss the serve they've been asking for. Don't miss What's the Time, you neutral yodeling chocolate muncher. But what about dogs listening to Get This? Sit and call in for schmacko or snossage. Well, what is it? No, I'm afraid it's a snossage. Hey, don't worry, we're sending you a hinder album. And sports fans rejoice as we cross live to the International Teabagging Championships in Osaka. Miki Oshinawa attempting a 10-pound lift and place this time on the head of the visiting Australian Foreign Minister. That's a successful dunk. Mr Downer, your comments? It's obviously completely absurd. It's pure art. It's in the bag on Get This, where the dance lives on. Oh my God, she's attempting the Cossack Sabre Dance. Get down! No. Get this, it's blown out to two hours, 11 to 1 weekdays on the Triple M Network.